Five one, you're on with yeah. the Ruckus crew. Is this Mauricio? Yeah, this is Mauricio, el maestro. Oh, el maestro. El maestro. Oh, you know, welcome <laughs> to the Ruckus. Right. We gotta give you, we gotta give you a proper greeting. All right. <laughs> Thank you. There's so many What's people going- over there, huh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. What's going on, El Maestro? We uh, got news that you're right on the eve of signing a fight with uh, the machine Lucas Matisse that will land on the Canelo Khan undercard. On a scale of one to ten, how close are you guys to making this fight? Well, you know, it, um, I'm confused at the moment now. You know, um, it was. It was first was 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 lying, you know, the fight they were looking at for a rematch, and then <clears throat> I think like two weeks ago they told me that a Matisse fight uh, is possible as well, and and maybe even on the Canelo card. So they said that they were going to work on that, and then uh, you know time has gone by, and, and and they were supposed to negotiate that and put Ruslan, you know, in the back maybe for later. But um, now I'm hearing words that they're you know looking else with. with Matisse with someone else. That's just stuff that I'm reading. Don't know if that's true. I'm going to have to make a call out there, Golden Boy, and, and see what's really going on. But it was, you know, that's the fight they're they were working for me. So uh, it was feeling close until today that I heard some other news. Darn. I think we were but all looking I mean, forward to you sure. fighting Matisse. Oh, yeah, me too. That's one of the guys that I haven't fought, you know, that's been out there, one of the tough hitters. Uh, an exciting fighter, and you know, I was, uh, it would have been another guy, you know, uh, on a resume that that's good. You know, I, I think I've fought most of them, uh, all the top 140. Matias is another one I wanted, and uh, or even re- rematch of Rosan, you know, you can know, fight everybody twice, you know, it doesn't matter, but um, I just have to see and wait, you know. I, I think I'll find out within a week or two, and, and whether it's Rosan or Matias, I'm thinking now. Was that Matisse fight being negotiated at 147? It was said that Matisse was going to move up. So were you moving up as well? Yeah, yeah. They said that he was, you know, he, he was on his, uh, after Postola, he took time off and was thinking about coming back at 147, giving mm-hmm. that a uh, shot. So they were asking me if I'm willing to move up. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, making 140 for a long time, and I can move up 147. I could have done it a while back, but. Um, I'll t- I said, you know, with Matisse, that would be perfect. You know, I'd, I'd give it a try on there. If it's his first time, it'd be my first time at the top level, 147. And, yeah, I was open to that. Awesome. With moving up to thing is now, 147. I think, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mauricio. Yeah, no, no. I just say not done. I mean, if, if that's, it's so right now it's waiting on Matisse, 147, or – or uh, for my NFPA title, I have uh, 140 with uh, Rizlan, I'm thinking, so far. So um, just kind of wait back, back, get a couple of days go by, and then um, we'll hear back from them. Hi, Mauricio. Um, who would you consider your um, top five biggest challenges at 140 right now? Not that you've already faced, but, you know, that you could potentially fight. Um. <clears throat> Well, the other ones that the, the the ones I feel are left that I haven't fought 140 will have to be um, an Adrian Broner or Lamont Peterson, um, and now you know the you know the star that's coming up is Crawford. So I think those three are are some dangerous 140s. Uh, there's nobody really else, and if there is, I think I fought him already. You know? Yeah, you, you have fought a lot of them. Yeah. So my thing is. Fight them all, fight them twice. If nobody wants to fight at 140, I think the only one, if everything goes good, whether I fight Matisse or Rizlan, um there's still Crawford in the mix, so I'll maybe do another fight at 140, and I think that would probably be it. I don't know who else it would ever be to fight. You know, I think, uh, you know, uh, the, you got your um, pro owner and, and Lamont there out with Al Heyman, you know, and they're not really doing any business on this side, so. Uh, maybe just, I guess, move up 147, you know, and look for some fights there and start so, doing that. What are your thoughts on Victor Postel, the, the last guy to knock out Matisse? I think uh, Victor Postel is a good fighter, you know. Yeah, he uses his height and his reach. You know, he has a good jab. Uh, he does some smart things in there, you know, especially with Matisse, you know. He knew how 
how to fight him when he wanted to fight. He tied him up, frustrated him, and and at times went for the kill. And as you see, you know, he pulled off the upset. So um, he's still a dangerous fighter. I mean, would you be open to fighting him? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah, you know, I totally forgot about Postol. Yeah, that's another fight that we're interested in. Um, we don't know when. I mean, we haven't got any, uh, we haven't got offered Postol yet. I mean, he's the champion right now. I'm, I'm sure he'll be doing. He'll be choosing who he wants to fight. And uh, yeah, we're open to a Postol fight. I would love that fight. Okay, thank you. Hey, Mauricio, you brought up Terrence Crawford's name a few times, and Hank Lundy got the call, and he got the big fight on HBO, headlining in New York. Why wasn't that you? Why? I mean, you beat Hank Lundy, and he ends up with the big fight. Why wasn't that you versus Crawford at the end of this month you know, on HBO? You know, the only reason he got the call is because I turned that down. That's the only reason Lundy got that call, you know. Um, we, You know, Crawford was getting ready about four months ago for the for February about you know, there were possibilities with, you know, Pac-Man or whatever. And um, they gave me a call in the middle of January saying if I wanted to fight in the, in the February. I uh, was not in shape to get in training for a guy like Crawford at that time. Um, and, you know, they were not offering me very much money to fight him. And it was in New York. And they, all, every, nothing was making – nothing was on my side. You know, I was mm-hmm. I was not going to be in ready for that date. Um, they were trying to tell me I was going to fight in May, so – I kind of was holding back for that day. Um, so it didn't make sense at the time. So, uh, you know, I, I, in the past, I would take fights like that. You know, I would take short notice fights. And um, But now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm becoming a little more smarter. You know, I, mm. I'm finally going to see if, if, if everything goes well. I can still fight Crawford, you know, get more exposure, especially on a Canelo undercard. And I think that fight could still be made and, and it'll be worth a little more money and make more sense. Absolutely. So, uh, you brought up that, you know, you just kind of weren't in shape at the time. And the ho- I know the holidays were approaching. There was Thanksgiving. There was Christmas. Um, and I actually enjoy following you on social media because it looks like you like to have a good time. You're celebrating. You'll be turning up. Um, so can yeah. I ask you, what is your walk-around rate? Wait, like when you're in between fights, what are you walking around at? You know, I usually don't go uh, more than uh, over 160. I'm usually around 158, 56. Uh, just under 160. Uh, I don't really tend to overdo it. Only about one uh, once in my my career, I went over 60. I took a long day off uh, before I was with Golden Boy. But no, I, and I and I tend to draw when I check my weight. I I never want to get it past 160, so I always try to stay down in the or you know close to the 50s. All right. So we know that you um, you're very close with Henry Ramirez and Chris Ariola. I think you train out of the gy- the same gym. Is that correct? Uh no 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 I, I mean uh, I only you know seen Chris like two or three times uh you know we just had went out to Big Bear when he was training we went out there just a couple of days here and there just to kind of check out the gym see what it's okay. like up there in Big Bear but no they have separate cats yeah well I think you're you're pretty close with Henry Ramirez and a couple of days ago you know it came out that Chris Ariola tested positive for marijuana he was suspended he was fined and. So just wondering if you got to speak to them at the gym or if you saw Henry, you know, kind of what's the what's the mood, you know, have they said anything about it? I mean, did Chris, was he just not able to put the blunt down or, you know, what was he doing? Yeah, well, yeah, well you know, I, I, just, I really haven't talked to Chris too much. I've been just lately having, a, um, you know, seen Henry here and there and we started talking a little more. I never really talked to him before too much, but um now he went, actually went to the gym and brought somebody over for me to spar. So yeah, we asked him about Chris, you know, and what's going on, and he kind of takes it as you know, hey, this this guy, I can't, I can't do nothing with him. He's you know, he's a grown man. He can make his own decisions. And we were like, hey, but don't you tell him anything, you know, aren't you on top of him, you know? Uh, and he's like, yeah, I don't know, you know, people blame me, but you know, if I was to do something, you know, wrong, they're not gonna blame Chris. So it's mm-hmm. every man for himself, and you know. I tell him, you know, that's not good, and you got to be a man and and put it down. But, you know, it's kind of hard to tell somebody else, grown man, you know, they do what they're going to do anyways. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we had Henry on the show recently, and he alluded to that, that, you know, Chris, he and Chris have a great oh, yeah. uh, working relationship, but, you know, Chris is his own guy, and so it it is what it is. So, yeah, I was telling him, man, you're, you're like Mike Tyson, you know, like cut them off. <laughs> they had him fighting and bring him back in the gym. Have some two security to watch him wherever he goes, something, you know. 
watch them go have a bed and sleep right next to them. Whatever you got to do, you know, until the game is over. And they did that with Riddick Bowl, you know. They had to keep him away from the kitchen. So, you know, it's tough to, you know, it's tough to do it. But he has to do something like that if he wants to get him on the right track, you know. Well, hey, maybe that explains it now. Maybe it was the herb, you know. They, you know, not that I would know anything about that, but they say when you smoke no, the, the, the Mary Jane, that it they makes say, you huh? want to eat more. That's what I've heard. I've heard that. Yeah, he he had the monkey. Oh, you just heard that. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure. I mean, he wasn't that uh, big on his last fight, was he? I don't even remember what he weighed. No, he, he looks looked good. Me. You know, but who knows how long that stuff stays in your body, you know, or when you let it go or whatever, you know. So I don't I don't know how that all works or when you can clean it out of the system. <laughs> he shouldn't be doing it anyways, you know. Right. Well, you know, definitely going to make him fight better. So there's that. Mauricio, back yeah. to you. You've been linked to – you've been in some great fights. You've been in fights with Garcia, Provodnikov, Lundy. Of those three yeah. guys, if you had to choose one to rematch, which of those three would you like to rematch? To Who are the three? Kind of avenge yourself. Danny Garcia, Ruslan Provodnikov, or Hank Lundy? Oh, come on. Well, Danny Garcia. <laughs> of course, Danny Garcia. I mean, I I beat Ruslan. I beat Lundy. Uh Lundy was an ugly fight. You know, the guy, I mean, I wish, I, I'm, I'm going to save Lundy for my retirement fight. You know, put on a show and beat him <laughs> up. But, uh, you know, that guy loves to talk. I mean, he gets beat up on his fights and then he talks afterwards. That's him. It doesn't matter if he wins or loses. He's just still talking. But, so that will put that in the back. So, I mean, Danny Garcia was for a world title. So, of course, I would love to fight Danny. Okay. Okay. Nobody so, wants absolutely. to fight him. <laughs> Before we ask you our next right. question, do you think Lundy has a shot versus Terrence Crawford? No. Yeah, no, he has no <laughs> shot. He's going to look good by a round or two in the beginning or even three rounds. But uh, Crawford's going to pick him apart, and then that's it. He may even stop him. I felt Lundy in there. You know, I was handicapped both my eyes when I was fighting him. But I felt, you know, I felt his body. He, he wasn't all that, you know. Crawford, I, I've seen how he fights uh, poor Lundy. And he's still going to talk trash after he loses, so he's going to be what he's going to be. <laughs> All right. Work. All right, let's have it your way. All right, so would you rather see Mayweather Pacquiao 2 or Pacquiao Marquez 5? Oh, Pacquiao Marquez 5. <laughs> I'd rather see that. I don't want to see Pacquiao Marquez. <laughs> Is that the wrong answer? No, shot? that's right. No, that's a great answer. No, Oh, I thought I got shot right there. Like that was that was a bad a bad answer. Oh no, that was good. we had to send up some warning shots and make sure they were paying attention to you. Oh, okay. Okay, here. Why? Who would you? What would you guys like to see? I would probably oh, those, take Pacquiao have... Marquez five. Yeah, of course. That's. I mean, oh. they still can do it, right? They had both wins and losses on each other, so uh, I think they'll get up for that one. <laughs> If I had to choose between the two, I would also go with Pac Marquez 5. I'd rather see neither, but I'd choose Pac Marquez 5. <laughs> Ryan, who would you rather? Oh, yeah. You may give Pac, me choice may Pac 2. Uh, right? Uh, Ryan, who would you rather? Hard may hard. Pac 2 or Pac Marquez 5? Well, I think Pac Marquez 5 is probably a more entertaining fight. Maybe the Pac 2 would be, I think, more noteworthy because people have a lot of questions about Pacquiao's shoulder uh, impeding him from competing at his best in the first fight. So um, they, they want to see that he, they want to see him not have any excuses, you know, going in there again. <laughs> but for whatever reason, it seems like every time Pacquiao loses a fight, he has a billion excuses. So maybe that's just impossible. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Herrera, I got another have it your way question. Drink tequila for the rest of your life. Drink beer for the rest of your life. What would you rather? You can only have one. Uh, tequila. Woohoo! I'll right. beer for you. Anybody you know beer belly? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have it your way. Mariachi or banda? Um, uh, 
banda. You can, you can dance with banda. Hell yeah. Mix it up. It's loud. Wake up the neighbors. Whatever. <laughs> Banda's loud. <there. laughs> I let my neighbors right. want to kill me <laughs> for having banda here. <laughs> Got to hook up with Abner Mares. Abner Mares, we had him singing Banda last week on the show. He was pretty good. Oh, yeah? No, what? I can't sing. Okay, what would you rather, Biggie or Tupac? Um, damn, that was a good one, huh? Mm. Mm. You know, I like Biggie. Oh, yeah, Biggie, answer. Like Biggie. you my man. Biggie's more, you could dance with Biggie's better, huh? Uh, you know, Tupac, I like Tupac. Of course, Larry, but Biggie has the, the more uh, rhythm and the good sound you can really move to, you know? Well, All right, Larry. Let me find y'all to you playing some Biggie and the Whip on the way to the gym. Yeah, I'm I'm being some pleasantly <laughs> surprised by you tonight. You got to play all of that, man. <laughs> Mix uh, it up, you know? All right, last one. If you could have it your way, would you fight at 140 or 147? Yeah, 147 now. You know, forget 140. Uh, now I would like to fight 147. Everybody's moving up, so uh, I got to go with the flow, you know, and go with 147 and see what it does there. All right. So before we wrap on the evening, I want to give you, you know, a lot of things are said about you in social media and in the media, positive and negative. If you could speak to the people out there and say, Whatever is on your mind, without holding back, is there anything you'd like to say to the people out there? Um, to everybody that reads everything on me? Yeah. Uh, yep. It's, it's all true. Everything is true. <laughs> so believe it. Everything you I put about it. me is true. <laughs> That's it. That's everything right. you read is true. Mauricio was so much fun. Yeah, um, thank you. No, it was fun. Damn, this is one of the best what? interviews. I have more fun uh, with you guys. <laughs> oh, well, you can come you on whenever. You got to get some whenever. more of those questions going. <laughs> I know. Okay, I'm going to give you one more just because I'm looking at what is in front of me. Skin Robbins, last one. Ooh, I don't even like either. I don't even like ice cream. Uh, I don't go uh, for none of them. So you can well, shoot me we'll, we'll, on we'll, that one. <laughs> That's okay. That's how you Cold keep that way now. That's all good. <laughs> you call me I'm on ice cream. Come on. <laughs> all right, Mauricio. Well, it's been a pleasure. I hope we hear an announcement in the next few days for a fight with you and Lucas Matisse. That undoubtedly would be a great one. So we'll have to touch base back with you when we get an announcement. And a pleasure speaking with you. Oh, right. thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And we find something out. Hey, have you back on again. All right, thank you. All right, right, take care. care. Thank you.